Well, probably the best place to start is from the ground up, I guess. The structure itself is this four-legged um, four tripod, uh, this quadrupod, which um, spans the field. Approximate dimensions in American are 180-ish feet uh, across and it's about 140, 50 feet deep. Um, the structure comes to an octagon, a, a sort of distended octagon, uh, which has various cantilevers on it that hold up the enormous quantity of PA uh, and also holds up the uh, cylindrical video screen. There's uh, opportunities for lighting in each leg, and we're using the new fixture from PRG, of which there's 12 in each leg and three follis pots, and a bunch of strobe, atomic strobes, um, blah blah. As ever with my productions, there's not that many great places to hang lighting trusses, but we've squeezed a few in. And then. Right up the middle, penetrating the middle of the structure, uh, is this pylon, which is tops out at 50 meters and is essentially entirely ornamental. It has no uh, practical function other than to make the whole thing heavier. And that is jammed full of moving lights, strobes, sodiums, blah, blah. And on the top, it has the world's first lightning conductor mirror ball, the lightning conductor being the central part of the proceedings, and the bottom end gives birth to another mirror ball, uh, which is rather pleasant. And there's also in there, actually, echoing my um, Lumia installation work, there are five custom-made ripple drums, which are developments from the bins I made for the elevation tool, which essentially is a naked light bulb in a revolving trash can with holes in. Um, the, the ones we made for elevation was, was a 5k naked tungsten bulb, and these are 6k xenon bulbs in there, which are absolutely wonderful. And then they revolve slowly, shedding their love over the whole of the stadium. The stage itself is, the edges are ringed with um, LED marker lights, but because that was such a feature of the Vertigo stage, the concentric rings, uh, it didn't really go to town on that. They're just there to complete the look, really. There's nothing particularly remarkable. And then there are more, um, more of the moving lights at the feet, uh, six at each foot, and then around the sides of the stadium, there are seven platforms right at the top of the stadium, which start at about the halfway line and go all the way around the upstage side. And on each platform there are some moving lights, there's the fabulous Nova Flower disco light, uh, fog machine, and a 4K Xenon, Xenon Fall Spot. Um, and even though that was a really was an extravagance, and they're, obviously they're brutal to get up and down there, uh, I was almost too embarrassed to put them on plot. But you know what? They absolutely make the look because we can light this thing from outside. And having those follow spots coming from, essentially from upstage, is just a look you've never seen before, which is quite, quite wonderful. A uh, couple of spot towers in the field to give us consistent spot throw. And uh, a bunch of moving lights in the mixed position. All the good stuff. Oh, and the, the structure itself is covered by a tensile skin which gives it this sort of undulating moonscape octopus sort of shape. Um, and that is punctuated by these disc-like polyps which have LED fixtures inside. Um, so the orange so and the green light. color of those, they just, you and Mark Fisher worked that out? Entirely arbitrary choice. <laughs> uh, really, based on, really based on uh, finding a color which is completely out of the current language of rock and roll. Um, the obvious things would have been to go with pop colors and that sort of thing, but. Um, this uh, it's this rather nice pastel green. O'Donnell, actually, is what we're calling it. Um, yeah, just really worked for 
and, and the goal always for me is when the punters come into the stadium they see something the like of which they have never seen before and this I think fits the bill quite well. well.